Hi guys and uh, welcome to uh, my uh, YouTube channel. Um, I'm, I've am i recently asked uh, about various ways of, uh, of doing or making some homebrew sort of projects from you know when you haven't got say for instance a printed circuit board and, and bits and pieces and I recall when I was you know knocking these sort of things up as a, as a kid that all the you know the various ways that the uh, that the guys used to to do things and uh, it, it might be a bit old school but I thought I'd actually show you because when I sort of suggested people try something called Manhattan style and dead bug sort of style of construction they didn't actually know what I was uh, talking about so I'm going to try and um, demonstrate just a, a few ways that you can you can do a few things and First of all, I'm going to introduce you to um, Manhattan style. Now, all I've done here very quickly is I've just just did a, a, a score across the, the end of the board and just broke a piece off um, just for, for this video. Um, and what I did then is I just nipped off um, a, a little piece. So you've got this little, little piece there. Um, and what we're going to do is normally you would stick this down with a little bit of double-sided tape. And if I grab an iron, um, what we do is we'll do, just do a quick demonstration how you would say um, do a little little bit on there for you, um, and you would you know typical sort of construction say um, putting a, a small component on a, on a bit of board. Um, Try not to burn myself at the same time. Um, on these there. Uh, so normally you would stick this down um, and and that is fairly straightforward. And that is, is a sort of like a, a very simple um, way. I don't know if you can see that. Um, yeah just about there um you can just about see what i've done there i've put a little island and then i put the component is on on say the the ground surface or the backboard and then it's isolated from the front well the idea be behind that is fairly simple what you can do then is you can then take other components and do the same thing um, bridge them from that and, and make up your your, your little circuit and that that is typically called a manhattan style so we just sort of you can see that again it's pretty hard to see down there um that's that's typically called a manhattan style but then there's something called dead bug which um again sort of comes from something really straight <laughs> pretty straightforward where you would take a say a component like a, um, an ic or something like that and that would quite simply be put on upside down you can see that okay and it looks like a dead bug um and that's uh, what that's actually all about um so we can get this a little bit more focus for you um there we go um yeah so that that would be typically how you do that and then you would make your connections so using from say from there you know that sort of island to one of the pins or any really of the pins and you know it's a very simplistic way of, of doing things obviously things move on just a tad um but as i say you can there's lots of things you can do you can actually you know take your, a component down to a back backboard um and you can actually then take the the components into into sort of thin air um, and actually link them up um you know bit by bit um and again that's uh, part and parcel of the of the dead bug style and it's typically used in believe it or not i think um mainly rf things um you want to try and keep the leads short um as short as possible um but you know that's that's pretty typical so there you go that's just how you do a manhattan style um obviously things move on and there are other things around now so for instance um, you may be familiar with this on the same vein as, as islands. This is actually called um, a pad board, or uh, I think that's how I know it. It's just it's basically as just little pads. Again, I don't know if you can see the, the little cutouts in there. There you go. You can see it just there. Um, 
there in groups of uh, three three holes um, and what you do with this is again it's quite simple you would take your component and quite simply push it through the board but you can see there it's it's gone over a couple of pads um, you know you can you know you can look you can see that it's yeah there you go um, so obviously that gives you your isolation and what you would do then is you would you would link all your pads together to make up your circuit um, fairly sim simple stuff um, on a very similar vein to that we have um, this is a quite an old bit of board actually this is a Velleman uh, well, actually no I'm, I don't know where I've got this I might have got this from Maplin um, but um, this one is made up slightly different you'll see that there's some actually uh, well there's actually some terminals at the top here um, and they actually would give you you could probably slot this into sort of something and, and get your connections out the end or if you needed some wire inputs from from one end I mean typically you might want to put a power supply in there or something so that would be your, your or maybe even if you wanted to take a um, I don't know you might want to take one of these sort of things out from one end of it you would take that out from the from the end of the board um, but you'll notice that there's actually long strips going along um, and that's called strip board and um, what you would do with this typically is you would use like something like a, a like a drill um, and it's basically a track breaker you break the you know the, the track where you need it to be broken um, to create like islands the sort of size you need um, and I find it quite you know easier to, to maybe draw out the circuit on the back and actually work out where I've got to do all the breaks before I start doing it um, and then bust all the bits out and then solder the components on before testing um, however that's pretty permanent and if it does go wrong and you've got to work it all out um, then that, that can cause a few headaches so you know nowadays things have gone over to things that like a, a like breadboard and this is uh, this is breadboard um, and you can sort of see here I've got a couple of components here already um, I've got like a uh, an, uh, an IC there just uh, connected on uh, or pushed in and then you just push the components in as you where you want them um, and this is a really really good way a cost effective way of doing things and these are these are as cheap as chips um, now this is a reasonably good one um, again I think I probably got this one from Maplin or wherever I don't know um, this one's an RS one um, I've had this for a long long time um, and uh, as I say again it's the same sort of thing you just push your components in one thing you've got to remember with these sort of things is they can't carry any current really to speak of um, and it's a surprising what they can carry but you're not talking about sort of uh, anywhere near you know an amp or anything like that it's uh, they, they need to be you know you need to to keep an eye on them you don't want to put too much current through them um, but again um, this is a really good way of doing things um, not not so clever for RF uh, type components but of, of uh, projects but it does work really well the one thing you will find also with some of these is that some of these larger components the pins won't go in the holes um, they're, they're a bit tight um, and putting transistors in is always a bit of a, a problem because you want to you know you you need three um, sort of connections separate connections and sometimes that's quite difficult with the spacing and how the circuits go in but um, again these are very good anyway I'm going to leave it there um, I think uh, that's a pretty much a reasonable introduction into the different methods and uh, I look forward to hearing uh, how you got on and uh, how, how you find it all right thanks for watching